Greetings everyone, this is Danny from hardtravel.com and I'm currently on board the beautiful Oasis of the Seas. She just finished a massive 165 plus million dollar renovation and looks incredible. A couple things that I'm really excited about are all the new things that they added on that came later on in Royal Caribbean, but now they've kind of maximized them, made them perfect, and you're gonna love it. I love this ship for a lot of reasons, but for me personally, this was the ship that established what could be done with ultra mega ships. There were so many firsts, the boardwalk, the central park, but basically it just kind of opened up the entire world of cruising and show you what could be done with a cruise ship. All right, so one of the things that I'm really, really excited about is the brand new Ultimate Abyss. The Ultimate Abyss was just added on to the ship during construction, it was not on there originally, and because of that, it's actually a little bit bigger than the ones on the Harmony and the Symphony. So it is the biggest slide ever built on a cruise ship. It's a dry slide, so you have these really cool uh, you know, sliding things that you put your feet into, um, you grab on and you just shoot all the way down from the very top of the ship down to the boardwalk. It's really, really cool, it's a complimentary thing, uh, but you may wanna go earlier or later to avoid some of the crowds. So just next to the Ultimate Abyss, you're gonna have one of the two flow riders over here to my right, but I wanted to head over to show you the zip line. So one thing you need to know is if you're gonna do the, the flow riders, the zip line, any of those kind of things, you're gonna to need to fill out the waivers before you go. So parents, make sure you go with your kiddos to do that when they first start. So let's head over to the zip line right now. So essentially you're cutting across the backside of the boardwalk. So he's just getting all strapped in and ready to rock and then you go, go across there. But once again, this was a first on a cruise ship and uh, I, I don't know of any other ones that have it other than the Oasis class and it's pretty darn cool. All right, so as we continue on to the other side, I wanted to point out the Wipeout Bar. It's always a really fun bar to be at on board because this is where all the action's happening. The flow riders, the slides, the basketball court, the zip line. And so you always have a lot of fun people up here having an absolute great time. I'm just gonna walk to the back of the ship really quick here just to kind of show you what that looks like. One of my favorite spots on any ship is the very, very back. Because the Oasis has the Aqua Theater, there's not a ton of spaces where you can be in the very back looking out. This is one of them and it's an awesome spot for sail away. So let's head over to the flow rider. So I mentioned that there are two flow riders on this ship. A couple things that you want to know. One, it is a complimentary activity, but you can also have special events if you're in one of the suite classrooms. You can also rent out one of the flow riders completely if you're interested. So basically they're going to help you either surf or boogie board. You decide which one you want to do. There'll be somebody on the side there that'll kind of hold on and, and, and let you get started. And then, uh, well, the most fun is the wipeout anyway. So give it a try and enjoy it. Just over here, you can see that this is where everybody's getting ready for the zip line. They got to do all the straps, so they get them set. When you get up there, you are ready to go. So one of my personal all-time favorite things to do on a cruise ship is, of course, play miniature golf. Another complimentary activity. You've got the Oasis Dunes. This was completely redone during the renovations. Let's see if I still got it. Here you go. Vince, you want to hit a ball? Here you go. So we've got a par three. Oh, wow. That's kind of crazy. Fair enough. All right, let's see if I can cut across. Cheat a little bit. Yeah, no, that didn't work at all. <laughs> there you go. All right, I got this thing. No, I don't got this thing. <laughs> yeah. My streak of, uh, of pars is done. So for me, some of my earliest memories of cruising is the miniature golf course. I remember on the Voyager of the Seas when it first came out, it was in the very, very back. You had the, the miniature golf course and of course the rollerblading. I'm sure you guys remember that. Uh, but it was just one of the things that we would always do. We didn't know what we wanted to do. We'd go play ping pong or miniature golf. And I'm really glad they invested some money in refurbishing this. It's in great shape and it's a ton of fun. All right, so just behind me, you can see the zip line. A lot of fun. Go and then take it right over here to where you land. Like I said, it's a novelty to be able to do something like that on a cruise ship, but also it's just a really fun thing to do. Um, and uh, you got plenty of time on this ship and so many things to explore. So before we head into the sports core, I did want to point out this unique feature. Once again, this is the first with the Oasis, mind blowing the first time that I saw it. So all of these are interior facing balconies that look down on the boardwalk. Some are, are in different positions. You've got the Aqua Theater suites in the very back as well. So you can take advantage of checking out the shows, uh, the people watching and all the energy that comes from the boardwalk, but also have some fresh air and a balcony. So when we head into the sport court, it's used for lots of different things. Um, I've seen quite a few people playing soccer here, pickleball, basketball, dodgeball. They have uh, events throughout the entire cruise where they have competitive games and you can just play pickup games and have fun with your friends. 
So one of my all-time favorite memories of the early cruising that I went on with my family was also playing basketball. My dad's a basketball coach, my brother and I both play basketball. And so we used to play basketball all the time up here and also dodgeball. Let's see if, uh, probably getting a little closer. Let's see if we still got it. There we go, not too bad. So after shooting some hoops or playing soccer, you can head over to one of my favorite new venues on board, one that I'm incredibly excited about, and that is El Loco Fresh. So you can think of it as a fast, casual Mexican restaurant. They've got a huge salsa bar. Over here, they've got all kinds of Mexican foods. But what I really love is that they have a ton of grab and go. So you've got the burritos and you got quesadillas. And then one of my favorite, all time favorite things is the uh, tortilla maker. So they're making fresh tortillas to order. But what I love about this is it's an easy place to go, grab a few things, have a quick bite, and it's really, really good. In fact, I have no idea how they didn't come up with this earlier. I love it. So just on the opposite side of Local Fresh, you have the Port Side Barbecue. It's a spot that I was really, really excited about because Royal Caribbean has never had a barbecue restaurant on board their ships. Let me take you inside. One thing that I notice is that the aesthetic is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the design is absolutely incredible, and it's another fast, casual restaurant option, which I really appreciate. So basically, you just grab a line here during lunch. It's gonna have a little bit of an abbreviated menu. Dinner be expanded, but basically you pick one, two, or three meats. Um, you pick your sides, head over and check out. And so what it allows is, you know, just five or six minutes, you can get a really, really good meal. My favorite so far were the, uh, the burnt ends. Um, believe it or not, I really like the macaroni and cheese as well. The cornbread was good. Um, well, pretty much everything that I, that I experienced is good. I love barbecue, and if you love good barbecue, this is a great option, especially on a cruise ship. In addition, there's also two great outside areas where you can eat, so you get that great wind flow, especially in the Caribbean. But once again, it's just a great option to have a fantastic, fast, casual barbecue restaurant on board the ships, and I hope to see it on quite a few more coming up. So we just headed up one deck to deck 16 to give you a better look at the pool deck. So there's a couple extreme differences that, that you'll, you'll notice immediately and right away. So for me, it's color. There's color everywhere. You have these incredible new cabanas that they have. Um, you saw them introduced on the Navigator of the Seas and the Mariner, um, but they also have all these different loungers. So previously with a Royal ship, you'd have you know, a ton of these blue loungers where everything looked very much you know, the same. Um, what you notice now going on the, on the Oasis is that they've added color absolutely everywhere. So here's an example of, uh, of one of the cabanas I was talking about. One really cool thing is they put USB chargers in there. I really love that. And then up on the bar deck as well, they also put USB chargers. One other new concept that they brought over from the other ships is this concept of the lime and coconut bar. So it's a bar, but it's, it's really the whole area and it's, it's what the colors are all about. One really fun thing that I love is uh, this bad boy right here. So you've got the steel drum, and you can learn how to play all of your favorite songs. My favorite is Margaritaville. Okay, so behind me you have one of the pools. You'll notice that you do have lifeguards on duty. They have the area around where you can get your feet wet and cool off because this is going to stay in the Caribbean uh, for the most part. Um, and then you have all the loungers out there, so a lot of open deck space here. But what's really unique about this ship is that it's open in the middle. So the pools are on the sides with an opening in the middle. I really love all of this new furniture. Throughout the entire place, you see they put in color and uh, really soft, comfy places to sit, hang out. And it, to me, it feels like there's a considerably larger amount of space uh, on, on the deck that has seating because they reconfigured it and they added the different kinds of furniture. Right here, you have a hot tub, and this is brand new. This was, this was added on, um, and they have one on the other side as well. But I love that they now have a hot tub that's up top looking down. So this is another one of the, the lounge you know, day beds that they've put in here. You can see all the color, and it's much more comfortable than, than just one of the, the regular lounge chairs. So now we're at the second pool here. Um, you see they mixed in uh, different amounts of furniture, and you've got the standard uh, deck chairs as well. you got another hot tub over here on the side, and then you also have the area to put your feet in. But what is, uh, is really, really cool about this ship right now that I think I'm most excited about for sure would be the water slides. So Royal Caribbean uh, recently added the trio of water slides that they call the perfect storm. Uh, but you've got these two racers on this side and then on the other side, they've got a big one with a champagne bowl, but it's uh, the water kind of goes around and I'll show you that when we get over to the other side. All right, so now I'm headed up to the suite deck. So this is gonna be available for only those who have access to the suite lounge, that's grand suites and above. But it's a private space, it's a lot quieter. You've got a great bar over here. Um, and as we head over to the front, you've got some great day beds and some seating where you can look down at the, where the water slides are or also look down at Central Park as well. But of course, the best part is the bar, right? How's it going? Good. Awesome. So we've had amazing service uh, in, in all of these suite areas. Uh, they, they do an incredible job. And uh, of course, if you have one of the top suites, you're going to have the beverage package. So this would be complimentary as well. One thing that I noticed right away is the furniture 
is beautiful. This is all brand new furniture. It looks really, really good. And I think it completely transformed the space. What you'll see here is this side or this corner over here is smoking. The other side is going to be non-smoking. So if you are in a suite and that's something that you want, you have the, uh, the ability to either have that or avoid that if you like. So as we head around to the front of the ship, the solarium is right in front of me, but there's a couple new things on here that I really like. So one, I don't know if this is a, a, a car wash shower or what it is, but you've got this great um, rainforest shower head and then the spigots, but basically this is gonna be in the Caribbean and so it just cools you off, which is something that, uh, that you really look for because up on the suite deck here, there's no hot tub or pool, but you do have access to that. Um, one new thing is these casitas. Once again, you don't need to, uh, to reserve them. They're complimentary if you're a sweet guest, uh, but they're these nice little spaces where you can hang out with friends and family um, and have a nice little you know, quiet area because the solarium's right in front of you. So you don't have the music and everything that you're gonna have in the back. Up here, it's just really chill and a great place to hang out. These look beautiful. Basically everything over on this side is gonna be smoke free. Um, you see that you got a few more casitas up here. Once again, really, really beautiful and a really great space to relax in, grab a book and chill. And then as we head around to the other side, um, you're gonna see it's almost a mirror image of, of the other side, but there is not a bar, but they do provide bar service. The waiters are coming around all the time uh, because that's what you would expect on a suite deck. So over here, they have an eclectic mix of seating. So you've got the, the padded loungers. You also have these great day beds. And one final thing that I wanted to point out that's really nice is they have their own restroom up here. So uh, you know that, that's just one of those, those pain points that if you had to leave to go use the restroom, that wouldn't be that fun, but they've got a restroom right here. And the space is handicap accessible if that's something that, uh, that is important to you. Okay, so now we're on the starboard side of the deck. And one thing that I just wanted to point out is this is a great viewing point. You get it down here is when they built these water slides, they actually left clear uh, acrylic glass there so that you can see what's going on. This is the, uh, I don't know, the champagne bowl, the, the toilet bowl, whatever you want to call it. But uh, one thing that's kind of fun is if you are a bigger person like I am, you might spin around a couple times. If you are not, you may not quite make it all the way, all the way through. So kind of a different adventure for each person that's going on the water slide, but it's a ton of fun. So let's now head down and I'll show you the other side of the deck. So on this side, what you're gonna see is it's more of a beach style pool where you have a large area that the water is uh, you know, just kind of gently lapping and then you have the big pool. You've got more hot tubs down below as well. And as we walk along the deck, once again, you just see all kinds of beautiful new color. So on the wall there, that was all white previously. And now they have these uh, two beautiful women that are there representing the lime and coconut uh, bar. But for me, it's a complete transformation to go from stark white and just, you know, a ton of loungers that are the same color everywhere to have these beautiful pops of color from the furniture, from the paint, uh, from the water slides. It, it just, you know, it's really a totally different experience for me. So this is the second new uh, Whirlpool that they put in. And I really like this as well because you can look down on the other deck and who doesn't love people watching on a cruise? In fact, that's uh, one of my all time favorite cruise sports. One other thing is on along the bar and pretty much everywhere where they had access to electrical, they added brand new USB ports for charging because we all know everybody's digital and then with the boom internet, you can combine the two together and have a pretty good experience. This space is the one that I, I'm pretty sure other than the Venture Ocean that my daughter is going to be really, really pumped about. So before, this was really tiny. It was small and it uh, had a little water slide and now you have several different water slides. You got these huge giant splash buckets and it's a really big space for the younger kids because the older kids are going to love the water slides and all the things they have to offer. But this is kind of the younger kids. I'd say probably about, you know, three to eight or nine would really, really love it. Right, so on the main pool deck, one of the fun places to hang out and explore is actually where the water slides come down. You get to see come, people come out yelling, screaming, and of course, if you're on the racers, you always want to win. But this is a fun place to sit and, uh, and watch. In fact, coming through right now. Very cool. Okay, so one of the great options for pools that you have is this beach pool. So you can kind of see here that the bottom loungers are actually in the water, so you can put your feet in the water. And then as you head over further, you've got the full pool, but a lot of space where you can hang out and relax because once again, in the Caribbean, it's all about cooling off and chilling. All right, so now I'm in Breeze. This used to be a full shop, but essentially what they've, what Rose done is they've automated it because they have the technology that they can do that. So these are all the things that you might've forgotten at home or things that you need to get, Tums or NyQuil or something like that. You also have sunscreen and uh, feminine products. Basically it, it's all the sundries that you might need. One other thing that I really like that they added on that's super cool is these charging stations. So the water slides and pool are just outside here, but basically what you do is you just click it, it's free. You set up a, a code and then you take your phone and you plug it in. So they've got iPhone, they've got USB-C, there we go. And then you're gonna shut it. I'm not gonna do that right now, but you shut it. And then when you come back, your, your phone is protected because you put a, a pin code in and then it's charged. And so great alternative to uh, leaving it by your chair on the pool deck. 
So all the way forward on deck 16, you have the solarium. I did want to point out this hot tub that's cantilevered over the side. That's where I was last night. They put some TVs in there so you can watch uh, football games and things along those lines. They first introduced that with the Freedom of the Seas. It was the first time they had anybody had really cantilevered hot tubs off the side of the ship. And it's just a really great spot because you can have incredible views. So now we're heading into the solarium, which is the adults only area on board, 16 and plus. So right over here you have, uh, it's the same on both sides, but basically you have a lounge area. You'll see the reason it's called the solarium is you have these uh, glass on the top. They've left it open intentionally. So when you're cruising, you get these really, really wonderful uh, ocean breezes. But from here you can see down over the entire thing. They've got a great mix of day beds, um, of new furniture that's, that's really, really beautiful. You've got a hot tub and also the large pool in the middle. Okay, so here you've got the Solarium Bar. Um, it's a great place to hang out, fantastic bartenders. And just for point of reference, this is the spot on the Symphony of the Seas where they put Hooked, which is the new seafood restaurant. So it's always interesting to kind of compare the spaces and see how they evolve and what they do with them. All right, so now I'm heading down to the main part of the Solarium. Right behind me is the Solarium Beast Show. And I just wanted to point out this water feature. It's so cool and it really actually keeps the temperature down in the space. As we get down, what you'll notice is it's super bright, it's super airy. Um, and uh, it's just adults, which is an awesome thing on a cruise ship. So one fun space is that they've totally redone and opened up the front part of the deck to include as part of the solarium. It's, it's one of the things that they did in the renovation that I really appreciate because now the solarium is quite a bit bigger. You have these huge couches here, um, new different kinds of lounge chairs as well. So instead of just having that, that one size fits all lounge chair, um, what you're gonna see is that, uh, that you've got a bunch of different options for seating, how many people that you wanna hang out with, things along those lines. All right, so all the way on the, uh, the side here, you've got the wing, um, which is now basically right above one of the coolest suites on board the entire ship. But uh, if you want to take your lovely uh, spouse up here and uh, go to the very front and maybe, I don't know, do a, a little Jack and Rose, I would say this is, a, this is the perfect spot for it. So there we go. Ah. Anyway, all right, let's get back to the solarium. So at the very, very front, uh, they put this huge new couch configuration which I think is awesome. So if you have 10, 12, 14 people that are, uh, that are hanging out, you can all hang out in one spot here and have these great views off to the front of the ship. All right, so just in front of me here is the pool. It's got a couple different features that I like. You can sit on the side, put your feet in. Um, you can also sit down there and not be fully emerged. And then you also have the, uh, the waterfalls that'll come down and cool you off as well. Over on the side here, you've got the hot tub, one on the other side. So in the adult specific area, you're gonna have two hot tubs and one large pool. One other really cool feature in this, in this spot as well is the Solarium Bistro. So I'm gonna head in there right now. What the Solarium Bistro is all about is it's kind of a, um, a mix, mix match of like spa food, light bites, uh, but it's just a great alternative place to eat throughout the day if you don't wanna to go to the Windjammer or one of the specialty restaurants. Throughout the ship, they're gonna have these Coca-Cola machines. This is some, a partnership that Royal Caribbean has. Um, basically what you do is you'll buy, if you buy the soda package, you'll get a tumbler, put the tumbler on here. It's gonna read the RFID code. And then basically you pick and make the sodas that you want. Just a fun way to customize your vacation. This drink station is here is gonna be very similar to what you're gonna find in uh, the Windjammer and throughout the ship. And then over here, you've got a nice selection of, uh, well, I always like to start with desserts. That's why I'm going this way. Um, but you got a great uh, desserts. Uh, warm foods, veggies, lasagnas, uh, mashed potatoes, all that kind of stuff. And then you have a fruit. Over here, you're gonna have uh, a little bit more of it as well. But what they did is they kind of opened up the space re somewhat recently. And so now it's, a, it's got a lot better uh, flow to walk through. And they have these really great like wings over here where you have uh, extra space to eat. And uh, once again, this is just another one of the really cool fast casual options that you're gonna have on board the ship. Grab and go so that you can eat, relax, and get back to having the fun. All right, so now we're headed into the Windjammer Marketplace. The Windjammer has been the buffet on board Royal Caribbean since the very, very beginning. Um, I've seen these added to most of the ships and they're adding more and more, but I love that right when you go in, you've got the hand washing station. So it's really, really simple. Wash your hands, especially on a cruise ship. It's so important to, uh, to make sure that you stay healthy and that you uh, keep everybody else healthy as well. So they have all these precautions in place for a reason. All right, so as we head to the back of the ship, the very first thing that you're gonna come into contact with is the beverage station. So you see that they always have them ready for you to grab and go and they've got the coffees and everything there as well. What they've done with this particular uh, restaurant and what they, what, you know, what Royal's doing in general is they have a lot of these separate stations. So instead of the old school long line buffet, they've got all the stations where you can grab and go. So right there's just a Monte Cristo sandwich, you can grab that. Um, and you have a total eclectic mix. So you've got seafood here. Um, this is uh, fresh from the garden, so salads and things like that. 
pasta station is always a, a super big hit. Um, for me personally, I love uh, all the uh, the meat products that they have. So you've got shrimp and you have also have uh, pork ribs out today. Just a, a total eclectic mix of different ethnic cuisines in addition to lots of, lots of grab and go items as well. So here's the Asian station and then the very back is the fruit. And uh, as we head back, I'll point out one more beverage station, but there's one station that is always superior above them all. And it's usually where I start and in my meals, and that of course is the dessert. So you can see they have a, a large mix of desserts out every single day, and uh, everything that you just saw on this side is the exact replica on the other side. But I wanted to come all the way to the back for a couple reasons. So one, um, this is usually the least crowded part of the Windjammer, because a lot of people just grab their food and they stop. But back here you have incredible views out to the back of the ship. You're looking down on the zip line, the sport court, the mini golf, and as you can see, it's wide open and there's always a lot less people here. One thing that they did add on this that I really love is they have the beverage station in the very back as well. So basically you have the ability to access anything and everything from any part of the Windjammer, which opens up the entire place. All right, so now I'm in the suite lounge, which is key card access. I just pushed that on the outside and doors opened up for me. So this is only gonna be accessible to those in grand suites and above, but it's a multi-use space. So over here, you're gonna have more of a lounge. You have beautiful, beautiful furniture. I love the new purple couches. Once again, keeping the theme, you have all the bright colors popping throughout. You also have this great uh, station over here that you can get, it's usually open uh, throughout the day. You've got your espresso, um, your vitality waters, and then just a, a little spread of desserts and uh, foods that you can grab and go. What you'll notice completely in here is that it is much quieter. It's a very relaxed area. And uh, this part is, is really kind of the lounge side. If you're a diamond member or higher, um, even if you're, you know, if you're in a suite, you can also take advantage of those perks at this bar, just like all the other, other bars. And then if you are in one of the top suites with a star class, you're of course gonna get the beverage package, uh, the Boom Internet. You're also um, gonna get the, the dining package. So beautiful bar area here. I did want to point out that over here, this is the only part that uh, can be accessed if you are not in a suite. This is the chef's table. They do this throughout the cruise. You can see it's absolutely beautiful, but it's a multi-course tasting menu that pairs wine and uh, well, really incredible food. And I've loved it on my other experiences on Royal Caribbean. So now we've transitioned to the other side, which is Coastal Kitchen. So this is a restaurant. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner, if you're in a grand suite or above, you can have it as, as you like. They do recommend that you make reservations for dinner just so you can get the exact time that you want, but it is not required. And if there's a seat open, they're gonna give it to you. Over here, you'll see that they have a mix of, uh, of different kinds of tables here. So you've got an eight top, two, four, six. Um, one other thing is, is to some limited capacity, you can also invite a friend to come and dine with you. But it's a really elevated dining experience. It's one of the best dining experiences on board the entire ship. And it's one of the reasons why I really recommend getting one of those grand suites or above. So here's a brand new venue on board the ship, and I love it. It's the Royal Escape Room. And basically what they've done is this is Mission Control, NASA, and it's their tribute to the Apollo program. In fact, right over here, they've got this great uh, Apollo uh, poster that's, uh, that's signed by several people that were involved. So this is done in conjunction with a company called Puzzle Break, um, and they do these escape rooms. They do an awesome job, as you would expect. Okay, so as you head around the corner here, what you can see is they have all of the Apollo uh, uh, signage up here. Of course, it feels like you're in a 1960s office, and then right when you come around the corner, you get the total feel that you are in NASA mission control. So you can have up to 12 people participating in the activity. You can do it private or you know, just, just join along, but everybody has to work together. Each person has a different job. And then of course, uh, when everything lines up, just like in the real mission control, you get an incredible blast off. So one of the spaces that got completely reimagined and actually the whole concept got totally redone is the Adventure Ocean Center. So this is the kids club on board Royal Caribbean. Uh, it has been since I was in the Adventure Ocean program and loved it quite a few years ago. I can tell you exactly how many, but there's a couple new things. So one, not every ship in the fleet has the AO babies, the Adventure of Ocean's babies, but they do have that on here. It's from six months to 36 months. And when you have littler kids, it's such an awesome thing. You can drop the kids off, they'll, they'll change diapers, they'll feed them, they'll do all that kind of stuff. And basically you have all day. It is a paid service. You pay $6 during the day, $8 an hour during the, during the evening. Uh, but once again, if you're traveling with smaller kids, it gives mom and dad the opportunity to go out, enjoy, have a good time. And they do an amazing job taking care of them. 
So another new space, or a reinvented space for sure, is the AO Theater, the Adventure Ocean Theater. So they do puppet shows in there. It's a totally new concept. I love it. I watched it yesterday. It was super cool. I know my daughter, as soon as we get her on here, she's going to love it as well. They also use it for movies and activities and all that, that kind of stuff. So the next space that I wanted to talk about is the Adventure Ocean Junior. So this is for the three to five year olds. And this has been a really similar concept to what they had before. You can see they have uh, fun arts and crafts, books. Uh, one thing that I really appreciate that Royal Caribbean's done is they've made all the small spaces for the kiddos. My daughter loves using a sink her, her size. She was potty training, she loved using the toilet her size, and I really appreciate that they did that here. So here you've got this set up for story time, uh, chalk drawing, all that kind of fun stuff. And let me take you to the back part. Once again, this is just three to five year olds. So you can see that they've added some great technology components, some new uh, you know, play areas. So I'm sure my daughter's favorite spot is going to be this pirate ship. She loves everything about boats and ocean and everything. So you fire the cannon. Um, once again, they've got more toys over here. They do activities constantly. So there's programming for them that is age appropriate. And my experience is they really, really like it. They also added this massive screen in here so they can show movies um, and have some more interactive experiences as well. So one of the brand new concepts that Royal Caribbean introducing on this ship is the Hangout. So it's a six to 12 year old space. So instead of dividing them up into three to five, six to nine, that kind of thing, what they've done is they separated out and basically created an open space. For me personally, what it feels the most like is more of a Montessori concept where the kids have the choice to do whatever they want. Um, it's a wider age range, but there's also a wider range of activities that they can do. So they're gonna have programming throughout, but they have a ton of things that they can do in here. So right now, we're in the, uh, the lab, the workshop area where they can do art, they can do science experiments. Um, basically, they pick what they're interested in and they can do that with their friends. Over here, you have a, an area that's more of kind of a, a hangout area. They've got some video games going. Looks like Xbox Connect. We've got the bean bags over there and then an easel. So basically just a place to hang out and chill. I also love that they've, they've brought in a lot of the digital, uh, you know, digital advancements. So this is a, a table, but it's actually a giant TV screen. It's fully interactive. You can play air hockey, you know, chess, checkers, different games here. Um, and then also it's just a you know, fun thing to look at. So let's head over to the other side. Right here, you've got a little area where they can play uh, video games and then you got the bean bags, hang out, relax and chill. Just inside here is a brand new space for Royal Caribbean. That's the arena. Exactly what you think it is. It's a place where, uh, where they can play soccer, dodgeball. They play all kinds of different sports and have a ton of fun in here. Uh, but once again, you can see that kids who are super active and want to play that, they have a space here. I also love that they put in this really soft carpet. So when you set up the, the, uh, the soccer goals, it's, you know, obviously falling down is not going to hurt nearly as much. But this is a really well thought out space. And what you'll notice is throughout this entire area, there's uh, doors like this that can come down where they can open them up and uh, expand the space. Over on the, the workshop area, there's actually a workshop that's outside um, that they can open up and once again combine it. So if they have a, a sailing with more kids, they can adapt based on the, the age level and what they need. All throughout the Adventure Ocean and then even right outside, you've got these interactive screens where you can play different video games and you kind of figure out if you get the best and then uh, go by a little bit later and see if anybody has bested you. All right, so now we're gonna head back to the final space here. Got a foosball table, a uh, fun old school slap shot uh, hockey game. And you'll notice there's places to hang out here. Uh, they show movies in this area. They, uh, there's a library over in the corner. You can you know, bring some of the art supplies and things over here. You see they've got the balls to play uh, dodgeball. A lot of fun. But really, the whole concept of this redesign is to figure out what kids really want to do and give them the choice to do it. So before, everything was very structured. Um, and the three to five year olds still are more structured. And I think that's a really good idea. But now you have the opportunity to, to really kind of go to the kids club and do the activity that you want. I know for me personally as a kid, I would have loved that. And uh, we'll see how it goes because this is a brand new concept for Royal Caribbean. In my mind, the only thing that's somewhat similar to it is Disney um, because they open it up to all those age levels as well. They even put the, the younger ones in there as well. But uh, same thing, basically just figure out what you like and enjoy it. Okay, so as we head out of the Hangout, I just wanted to point out, this is the workshop right here where they have multi-age groups can go in there and play. They do family activities, you have family art time. But once again, they have the ability, if there's more kids on board, they can lock this off, open it up on the inside, and just expand the space in the Hangout. All right, so another really awesome space is the Play Place. I know as soon as we get on this ship, this is where my daughter's gonna head to. Um, but basically, it's, it's kind of a jungle gym, an area to play around, hang out, relax. Um, one thing that I did notice is when they just closed it down, they wiped everything down uh, with disinfectant wipes. That's something that they're really good at, um, is trying to keep, you know, keep everything clean. That's tough with kids. I have 
at home. I know that, but you can just see it's a it's a fun place to hang around. Lots of places to hide underneath, especially for the littler ones. Um, so this is going to be probably best for uh, the toddlers and probably those who are, are in that up to five to six, seven age group. But once again, just another really cool space. Um, and the nice thing with this is as a family, you know, you can take, I'll take my nieces and nephews and one of us can just come up here, let them play around, hang out. This space is generally open all day um, and it closes in the evening when Adventure Ocean closes. All right, so now I'm in Social 298, which replaced fuel on board the ship. 298 actually refers to the location on the ship if you look at the blueprints. But there's a great outdoor area for teens to hang out. Um, this is going to be your 13 to 17 year olds. Up to 12 is going to stay in the Adventure Ocean. But you have a lot of these little nooks and cubbies. There's great new screens that are fully interactive. You can play games, do puzzles. Um, they also have a, uh, a place where you can request music. You can pick the music there and a dance floor as well. So basically the space is quite a bit smaller, but I felt like that fuel used to be very underused. So by turning this into kind of more of a, an ultra lounge, I think it's a great fit. So now we're heading into the arcade. Now pick, wait, who's me? Is that me? No? no? Anyway, too much fun. All right, so now we're heading into the Challengers Arcade here. Once again, a staple on Royal Caribbean. One thing that I wanted to point out right when we go in is that all of the games are an additional charge. And so it's highly recommend that you talk to your kids before. Maybe you set a budget for the whole cruise or per day, um, but uh, you can figure that out with your kid before you go. And then once you get on board, you can let them know and you can set that. So you've got a mix of games as you would expect. Ski ball, basketball, there's some bowling here. Of course, you can't go wrong with uh, air hockey either, but it's just an assortment of games to hang out. There's other places on board where they have these. Uh, one of the other ones is gonna be down on the boardwalk as well. But for the most part, this is the major part of all the video games. And once again, it is an upcharge. You do need to pay for them. Okay, so now we're heading into the elevators, which generally aren't that exciting, but these are because you got the beautiful glass ceiling, um, and also you have the uh, um, you also have these new banks that are in here. They just put them in on, on the renovation, so there's a video. There's always something going on, but it's really easy to use. And uh, the other ones were uh, kind of wearing out. All right, so a brand new venue on board the Oasis of the Seas, one that I've loved on the Quantum class, is the Music Hall. So the whole idea behind this is a place where cover bands rock. Out. So they really do rock, they do an amazing job, um, and it's also a multi-use space as well, so it's going to be used for a couple different things. But first, I just wanted to really point out the massive renovations that they did to the space and the conversion that looks absolutely beautiful. So we're on the second floor of the, of the music hall. It is a two-story venue, and the first thing you're going to see here is a pool table. So. Uh, to my chagrin a little bit, it's not the same as the ones on the Radiance class that has the gyros on there. Uh, but this is pretty much dead center in the middle of the ship, so didn't have any problems playing the other night. They've turned the whole space into kind of a, a really chill living room hangout area. So you see this beautiful brand new furniture there. Down below, you've always had this when this was Dazzle. So you've got these great seating areas where you can look down. But one thing that they did is they expanded this balcony quite a bit to make the space bigger so more people can, uh, can hang out there. They also have this great assortment of, of nooks and hideaways kind of like this. Um, but you can think of it as an alternative to the old school uh, nightclub. They do have that you know, somewhat on blaze down below. But for me, this is a great place to hang out in the evening and enjoy great music. All right, so now that we're heading down to the first floor of the music hall, you'll see that they added a ton of massive speakers. Um, it looks like they made the stage a little bit bigger as well, but you still have this incredible view looking out the back of the ship. Now you can see the ultimate abyss. That view did not exist just a couple days ago. So down on the bottom floor as well, you've got another, uh, another full service bar. You're gonna have bar service throughout the entire space. Um, and one of the things that I loved on the quantum class is they also do the silent disco in here. So you can party out and have the loud music, but then you can also uh, put on the headphones, listen to what you want, but you're all rocking out at the same time. It's kind of a, a funny thing the first time you do it, but it is a really cool option. Another great part about this particular space is uh, the bottom floor being on deck eight, it's gonna open out right up into the central park where you can have a lot of the dining options. Hey look, the lime and coconut. I like it. All right, so now I'm heading into the Central Park area. It is absolutely awesome, and it was the probably the most innovative thing that I think any cruise line had done when this ship was built. There's over 12,000 plants on board, a ton of them in here. They have the living wall, uh, but really it kind of, when you're inside in this area, you don't believe that you're actually in a cruise ship. It's just spectacular. All right, so one thing that you wanna know about Central Park is that you are open to the elements. The sky is above me, so they have these great golf umbrellas. So basically, maybe you're, uh, you're coming into dinner in the evening, it chops, just like you would when you're coming in when it's rainy at home. And uh, see if I can open this bad boy up. There we go. And up, and that way you and your uh, lovely spouse can uh, hang out, relax in the restaurant and not be uh, super duper. Here you go, Vince. Thank you. There we go. Super duper wet. So one thing that I love about this is that it's kind of an eclectic mix of experiences. So over here, you've got people playing chess, 
like you would expect in New York City. Um, and then the next thing you come upon is this beautiful uh, one Central Park 150 restaurant, which is their farm to table restaurant. Right, so Central Park 150, you can see, is a really, really beautiful space. It got a gorgeous facelift. Um, they redid a lot of the upholstery. But this is one of the higher end restaurants on board. It is an extra charge, but it's really this farm to table concept of really delicious, uh, really fresh foods. And also, uh, it's, it's one of the healthier options on board, but I can personally find uh, opposite of those in every single restaurant and, and enjoy those as well. So you see this beautiful mosaic that they have here in the back and then of course a large wine collection that uh, you know if, if, if you want to have a dinner like this you want to pair it with the perfect wine. So once again in the Caribbean you can get some rain and outside of every restaurant as well they're gonna have these umbrellas. So I, uh, I love that idea of having a, a space that is wide open and beautiful um, that has a ton of plants you feel like you're not on a cruise ship. It's just, it, I don't know. As I'm walking through here, it's hard to even describe. Thank you, sir. You it. It's hard to even describe, but you have these beautiful floral arrangements with the orchids. Um, you have all kinds of tropical plants and each section that you go to, you get a little bit more and a little bit different experience. But once again, it's incredible that this is on a cruise ship and now it's on all four of the Oasis class ships. Now we're gonna head into uh, one of my all time favorite restaurants because I love a steakhouse and that's Chops Grill. Okay, so now we're inside Chops. Like I said, it's a complete and total throwback steakhouse restaurant. They have great steaks and shrimp and everything that you would expect at a steakhouse. And another thing that I really like in here is that they have this open kitchen. Um, a couple of the restaurants on board Royal Caribbean have the same open kitchen concept. And I don't know, for me, it just adds to the meal. And also you get those bursts of the smell. And uh, well, anyway, steak is pretty amazing. So now I'm gonna head out to the outdoor area. So once again, we are still inside of Chops, but this is an outdoor seating. It is covered with glass right here, so you don't have to worry about that if there's inclement weather, but make sure that you let them know that you want the outdoor if that's what you want, or if you want the indoor if that's what you want right when you make your reservation. And once again, this is an upcharge restaurant, so you're gonna pay more uh, for it, or you're gonna pay a cover charge for it. All right, so just outside of Chops is another, I know I've said this quite a few times, but it was another incredible innovation that Royal Caribbean did, and it's the Rising Tide Bar. So what this is, is right now, the bar is uh, on in Central Park area, which is where we are right now. It goes down three floors, down to the Royal Promenade. So there's never been a bar that moves on a cruise ship before this, and it's such a really cool concept. You have the, uh, the bar on there and the bartender, so you just sit back and relax. The only thing I will caution you is if you have an appointment or a dinner time or something you need to make it to, you wanna pay attention to that so that you don't miss uh, wherever you're going. Cause once it starts, it takes a little bit of while to go up or to go down and uh, well, just a cool place to hang out and have a drink with friends. And I know I've even, uh, here you go Vince, yeah, thank you. Thanks, I know I've even seen them do a wedding in there. So they can do special events if that's something that you're interested in, but make sure that you work with me, your travel agent far in advance to get all of those kind of things set. So now we're heading on further into Central Park and you have the trellis bar. This is a great place to people watch. You can sit out here, you get the people walking by. Um, I find that it's a lot cooler because of the plants in here. Um, and it's just, a, like I said, it's, it's a beautiful bar and it's a really great space. You can see they have all these places tucked away. So this is a, a trellis that you actually walk through. Right now they're, uh, they're cleaning up, uh, replacing some of the plants. Um, but basically you walk all the way through there and you're completely surrounded by plants. You don't know that you are uh, on a cruise ship. So to the right of me, you have this glass dome. I really like it because what it does is it opens up to the promenade. So you get light in the Royal Promenade during the day. And then of course they have it all lit up at night. Last night we had an amazing 70s party down there. I, uh, I might've busted out some YMCA moves. Just saying that is a Royal Caribbean tradition, something I've done uh, quite a few times. I, I'm a Diamond Plus member on Royal. I love cruising with Royal. And so I've, I've done some of these events uh, quite a few times. and gonna continue to do it. And now I get to pass that love on to my daughter. All right, so this is the Park Cafe. So what the Park Cafe is, is it's complimentary. It's, it doesn't have an upcharge. Um, hello, how are you doing? Um, so what you have is it's another one of the great fast casual restaurants on board the ship. So right here you have salads that you can make to order. They'll, they'll toss them for you, all the things you would expect. You have these ready-made sandwiches that are really nice, ready-made salads. Um, you can grab some chips. And then of course they have uh, you know, meats and sandwiches and everything down here just a little bit further. I'll squeeze by you, thank you. Okay. Here you've got a soup station and then uh, tuna melts, Cubans, veggie quesadillas, all kinds of stuff. So really the idea with this is you want something quick and uh, you just wanna you know, go out and hang out with your family. But you know where you're gonna find me, of course. Well, my favorite, the dessert bar. Mm. Anyway, throughout the ship, they also have a couple of these uh, espresso makers to make specialty coffees. Um, this is not Starbucks, but I really do like it. And uh, in fact, I think it might be better for me personally. Hey, it's Ali, got him, how's it going? 
Okay, so they have a great mix of indoor and outdoor seating like they have all, all throughout Central Park. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, and now we're gonna head over to one of the cla other classic Royal Caribbean restaurants, and that is Giovanni's Table. So on different uh, different ships, they have uh, two different uh, Italian restaurants. They have Jamie's Italian, uh, and then now and Jamie uh, Giovanni's Table as well. Going forward, my understanding is they're all going to be Giovanni's Table. But what it is is about a really delicious family style Italian meal, and it's really good. I've had it quite a few times, and uh, well, probably gonna have it again tonight. Okay, so as soon as you walk in the restaurant, the whole concept is to believe that you're in Tuscany, that you're in Italy, and that you're having delicious food. So you see that there's quite a few more sharing tables in here than some of the other restaurants that are set up for six, eight. Uh, I've seen one over in the corner that can even be for 10, but they're gonna have the pizzas and the pastas. I love Caprizi salad, it's really good, and the calamari is out of this world. So make sure that you try Giovanni's table on board the ship. All right, so now I'm at an out of Giovanni's table. Once again, delicious, delicious Italian food. And now I'm kind of in the Central Park Main Square. So they put in all kinds of new furniture around here. Um, I really like these low seats with extra cushions. But before we do, I wanted to uh, point out a couple things. So one, you have these interior facing balconies that are uh, a great alternative to being on the boardwalk. And then of course, you know, the ocean too. Um, but they also have these great rooms right here that are interior rooms, but you've got a window facing down on Central Park. So you're not gonna get quite as much of uh, um, you know, the noise. You have a little bit more privacy in there as well, uh, but it's a great place to sit. There's a little couch you can sit and uh, explore. So you might wanna check out one of our, our room tours. We have all the rooms on this ship, um, but that's, that's one that's really unique to this ship only. Big events. Okay, so as we continue on, um, I wanted to point out a brand new venue on board, and that's the Central Park Library. Essentially what they did is they replaced the library up top and the Diamond Club, they moved those spaces. And so it's a little bit smaller, but it still has a great uh, great mix. You can check out the books, grab and go as you like, you just sign them out, and they just ask that you give them back to you, give them back the last day. So as we continue on, um, they've enhanced the uh, high-end retail on board. You have a full Tiffany and company right here. Um, and then you also have a, a John Hardy store. So if you're looking to spend a chunk of money on some jewelry, by all means, this might be the exact place for you. And it is duty free, so it's a savings over what you would pay on land. So right now I'm gonna curve just around and do a little bit of backtracking so that I can go into the last uh, you know, venue here. And that's going to be the wine bar. So it's, it's of course a, a mixed use space, as you can imagine. I've done several wine tastings in there, but it's also just a great place to meet up with your friends um, and hang out. It's a really chill and relaxing space, and it's usually really quiet in here as well. So you can see that they completely redid the interior in here. Um, they put some bigger, larger couches, some larger uh, furniture as well. It's really, really nice. It's totally redone. And then as we head over here, you've got the wine bar with a massive wine selection, as you can imagine. Um, and then as you continue on, this is where they're gonna set up the wine tastings here. And I just wanted to point out one fun thing. Underneath there, I'm not sure if you can see that, but in 2007, this was classified as the world's largest bottle of wine. So it's eight foot three. The bottle of wine is a couple feet taller than me. So. We could have some fun, I'm just saying. All right, so now we're heading into the Boardwalk, which is a brand new venue, once again, created by Royal Caribbean for this ship. And it has a couple firsts. So the very first is a first wooden carousel at sea. So you can see here, this guy, I love the artwork here, where it kind of shows you the different stages of carving the, uh, the different horses and uh, zebras and all kinds of things, but you can kind of really see, and it's great for kids as well, to see how they you know, shape it and how they carve it and how it evolves into a beautiful, beautiful finished product, like you're gonna see over here, okay? So this is one of the finished ones, and then that, of course, is the beautiful carousel. There's several dining venues out here. So the way Royal Caribbean designed the ships was to have several different neighborhood options that really would separate people out, help with uh, you know flow of, of people around, and this is, is brilliantly done that. So right here is the doghouse, complimentary. You don't have to pay extra, but if you're into hot dogs, brats, and things like that, this is the place you want to stop by. And as we continue on, um, this is a brand new, completely redone venue on the Oasis, and that is Sugar Beach. So this is the place where you're gonna fill your absolute sugar tooth and uh, really, really, well, anyway, you'll see. So as we come over here to the side, they have an amazing assortment of candy. Apparently, Royal Caribbean has uh, decided that, uh, or has, has seen from feedback that people love candy. I do, just saying. Um, but this is a whole entire wall of candy. Got some plush toys over here. Hey, look some more candy, and then of course this uh, beautiful ice cream bar that also has an external facing window if you're interested. All right, so I just have to say goodbye to my gummy bear friend. They're I'm pretty close with gummy bears. So there's the window I was talking about where you can order uh, all kinds of different ice creams. It is an extra charge, so you just wanna keep that in mind. The next spot is the beach shop. So this is one of the retail spots on board. You're gonna find the, the beachy kind of retail, Billabong, Roxy, Quicksilver, Nautica, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, right here, what they're doing is they're actually blowing up balloons for the kiddos. So you'll see these different activities throughout the day that you would expect 
with a, uh, a boardwalk and amusement style activity. And then one of my all time favorites is Johnny Rockets. Johnny Rockets debuted on the Voyager of the Seas and it's been on every single Royal Caribbean ship since. So outside you have a bunch of great seating areas here. There is a cover charge for Johnny Rockets, so that's something that you want to keep in mind. But they, ha they do a great job with that authentic 50s style diner. So you have the beautiful, uh, you have the beautiful uh, booths. You've got at every single booth, you're going to have a little jukebox here where you can pick the music. It's all going to be from the 50s and 60s. I've had a lot of meals in here with my dad and my the rest of my family, and we just we always love Johnny Rockets. In fact, in California, we go all the time because uh, there's a couple of them there. All right, so directly across from Johnny Rockets is Playmakers Sports Bar and Arcade. To me, this is a venue that has been sorely missed for a long time, and I really appreciate that they created it because not only did they create a sports bar, but they also spent millions and millions of dollars on getting new programming so they can have licensing with the MLB, uh, NFL, uh, things along those lines. And so you're going to have a ton of options to view the sports that you love on board the ship. It's got a classic menu. You got nachos and uh, potato wedges and everything that you love. My personal favorite is the is the uh, the wings, but my personal favorite everywhere is the wings. So I will be going in there a little bit later this evening and having a few wings and some beers. They also have some great games in there. They've got shuffleboard, some old school retro arcade games. Played some Donkey Kong earlier today. Made me really really happy. Uh, but uh, it's a great venue, and you can see it replaced uh, Sabor here, but they also expanded it. So it goes from the end of the boardwalk all the way to the other end of the board. Like it's a massive space and it's been hopping every day that we've been on this cruise. So I know people are gonna love it. All right, so you have nearly 70 TVs here in Playmakers, but one unique space that I wanted to point out was this owner's box. So the whole idea behind it is you can reserve it for you and some friends, have a good time. Maybe you're watching a, a football game or a basketball game, playoffs, or you have two huge screens here, which I love because you can put two different things on. But basically, this is a private space that you would need to reserve. Um, but once again, you can have incredible food in here. And if you love bar food, pub food, you're gonna be really happy. Okay, so now we are at the ultimate abyss. This is the tallest slide ever built on a cruise ship. It's such an awesome thing to do. You see that they have these great little sleds. I'll grab that from you, thank you so much. All right, so they have these really awesome sleds uh, where basically you put your feet in here, you hold on, so just kind of like that, sit down and let her rip. It is a blast, it goes really, really fast, and you're not going to uh, regret doing the Ultimate Abyss. So as I look up, you know, the Ultimate Abyss has really changed the landscape of this ship. This used to be a bar right here, it was the Sabor Bar, um, and it looks totally different, but it looks perfect. You can't even tell that it wasn't here from the very beginning. So as we continue further back on the boardwalk, there are rock climbing walls on both sides. This has been a staple on Royal Caribbean ships for over a decade, and they were the first ones to ever put a rock climbing wall on board. What I love about it is another one of those activities that you can enjoy doing it, and then you can also enjoy people watching. If you happen to be in one of the aqua theater suites, which I think are the best rooms on the entire ship, you get a ton of these views. So you get to see the, the rock climbing wall. Um, of course, you can see the boardwalk, but let me show you the aqua theater. One of the places where Royal Caribbean really blows all of their competition out of the water is the entertainment. So you see this beautiful aqua theater, it's amazing, but what's really amazing is the athletes that put on an incredible show here. So you see that you have a high dive up there, there's a pool, it's a really interesting space. I've never seen anything like it. So the pool itself, um, the, the ground can come up and it turns into a full stage and they put it down and they actually dive from the very top. But it's more than just diving, they're doing all these crazy acrobatics and they also do other shows back here as well. So you never have to worry about entertainment on Royal Caribbean you know you're gonna have an amazing time and have a ton of options. All right, so we're heading out of the boardwalk, but I wanted to point out just one last thing. I love playing basketball games like this. You have competition with your friends, and uh, I always, always, always win, except for maybe this time. I think Taylor had me, so. But let's head on out, and before we do, I wanted to stop by one last time to say hello to my good buddy, Zoltar. Let's see. Hmm. Cruise. Yeah, he told me a cruise is in my future. I can't believe that, that's amazing. So just across from the boardwalk, you have a few more venues that I wanted to point out before we head down to the beautiful Royal Promenade. So the first is Next Cruise. Basically what this allows you to do is book your next cruise on board with Royal Caribbean and uh, they're gonna give you a great discount that, that you get and the booking goes directly back to your travel agent so you don't have to worry about that at all. Basically you book with me to begin with, you come on board, you get that extra up to $600 off and it's a win-win for absolutely everybody. Make sure that you do book it on board because once you get off the ship, you cannot take advantage of that benefit. So now we're heading into a classic Royal Caribbean venue, the Schooner Bar. Immediately I see that they redid all the furniture. It looks really, really beautiful, but it is not a Royal Caribbean ship unless it has a Schooner Bar on it. And I have not gone on a Royal Caribbean cruise until I've hung out next to the piano, sang along a little bit, and really enjoyed what the Schooner Bar is all about, which is the old, I don't know, maybe pirate style camaraderie of having a good time on the water. You see they have the, the schooner over there. They've got the netting, which is on all of them. 
They have a couple of these great spots as well too that are set up because we're above the promenade. You have a great view down to the promenade, some incredible people watching. And then the bar over here as well, uh, and they have the figurines like you would have at the front of a boat. So once again, the Schooner Bar is a classic Royal Caribbean venue and it is not a Royal ship unless you have one on there. So just across from the Schooner Bar, you're gonna find the, the Shore Excursions desk. What's really cool is now they've added all these uh, digital media here where you can explore the different Shore Excursions. Of course, they have people here to talk to you, explain it, help you purchase the ones that you want, but it's really nice you can do a little self-exploration before you dig into it. And then the other thing is Focus, which is the photo gallery on board. You see all the screens down there. Basically, you take your card, you tap it on there, and it's gonna pull up all the photos that you had from the entire cruise. You can choose to purchase them, you can choose to print them. It's totally up to you, but it's really nice that they have it all digital now so that you don't have to worry about digging through a bunch of photos and finding, uh, well, the ones that you do or you don't want. So from here, we're actually gonna head down the staircase to the Royal Promenade. The Royal Promenade is awesome. It first debuted on the Voyager of the Seas and uh, it, it's, it's been on every ship since for a very, very good reason uh, because it's, it's kind of that perfect mix of uh, you know dining, people watching, exploration. They do parties down here. There was a cool 70s party yesterday. Uh, and they just kind of mix it all up. And so you get a lot of things on here and it's a perfect venue for every member of the family as well. All right, so now heading into one of the coolest venues on the high seas. It debuted on the Quantum of the Seas and that is the Bionic bar so it is a robot bartender it's exactly what it sounds like you see up here you have all the different kinds of alcohols that you could possibly imagine you place your order on on the ipad uh just over there on the screen um, and then it's going to make your order for you so a lot of times during the day it'll have music going where it's kind of coordinating that uh, right now they're just testing it out because this is a very very new thing on the oasis it's uh, it hasn't even been out for total revenue uh, revenue passengers yet but you can see here it does an amazing job. So it does exactly what it's supposed to and it pours the perfect drink every time. I love it, but that said, I love the interactions that I have with the bartenders on Royal Caribbean. So I'll come here, check it out and enjoy it. But I'm always going back to my favorite bartender and I usually can find them in the first day or two on board, if you know what I'm talking about. So right now we're gonna cut across the Royal Promenade. And uh, I wanted to point out this beautiful spot here because this is the Rising Tide Bar. So you saw it earlier when it was up in Central Park and you can see the bar is all the way up there and it's gonna come down three stories and then of course go back up. But it's just another really cool and unique, interesting concept they came up with. It's been a major hit. Right here, I wanted to point out a couple more things. You've got the Voom internet station down there. So right when you get on board, uh, if, if you're having any trouble with the internet, that's where they're gonna help you connect. And then you start uh, a little bit of the retail here. So you've got the Fine Watch store and guest services. So this is one of the most important places on board. And one, a couple little tips and tricks that you wanna, wanna think about is one, it's gonna be the busiest the first day and the night before the last day. So if you have any business you need to take care of, maybe you need to update a credit card, you wanna pay off your bill, make sure you do that before the night of the last day because it's gonna be crazy. And on the first day, if it's something you don't need immediately, I'd wait just a little bit so that everything settles down, people get what they need, and then you can get what you want. So to my left here is the first food venue and that's Cafe Promenade. So on the Oasis class, they've split Sorrento's Pizza and Cafe Promenade into two different things. Once again, fast casual, bunch of grab and go sandwiches and desserts. I once again love the desserts here, if you can imagine. So one really cool thing that you're gonna see on every single Royal Caribbean Promenade is a super cool car like this. So the chairman of Royal Caribbean loves cars, loves teddy bears, so just a little tie in for you. You're gonna see them everywhere and they're really fun. You see a lot of people taking pictures with them and uh, really it's just for enjoyability and they're all completely different. So as we continue on, I just wanted to point out a couple more things. You've got more retail over here. You've got the collection here that's gonna be high-end bags and things like that. There's an entrance to the Casino Royale from the promenade right there. Um, on the other side here, you've got the Island Market that, uh, that did replace the Kate Spade store there. Um, but once again, you've got kind of a, an eclectic mix of uh, jewelry and things that, that uh, regale the island lifestyle. So now we are getting to the Globe and Atlas. So this is a, an old school British pub. You're gonna find these once again on all the promenades on Royal Caribbean ships. Got the beautiful decor, the copper tabletops here. Um, and inside, you're gonna have a total mix of bar seating, a lot of bar stools, some small tables and, and high tables as well. You also have music every single night. So they're gonna have somebody with a guitar or somebody playing uh, live music and singing. Um, you also have uh, some fun and games that happen in here as well. But this is exactly what you think it is. It's a British pub, Irish pub, and the whole idea is to get it together and just have a good time, maybe share a drink, and uh, cheers to all of your friends. Right, so directly across from the pub, you're gonna find Sorrento's Pizza. This is another one of those venues that Royal Caribbean has had for a really, really long time since the Promenades debuted. And what you're gonna find here is a 
Italian pizza parlor. They also have a mix of different uh, snacks and foods and things as well. But you can think of this one more time as a great fast casual restaurant. This is also open late. And so a lot of times, just like Cafe Promenade, so a lot of times you'll find people in here after going out and enjoying the, uh, you know, the club or having a good time, coming back here later in the evening. I know I certainly have had a few slices of that pepperoni pizza between one and something in the morning, but any which way. All right, so as we continue along the promenade, uh, one thing that I definitely noticed compared to older promenades is you have that light coming in from the ceiling. It really does make a difference. So as I continue on, you see the logo shop over here. So if you love Royal Caribbean like I do, this is where you're gonna get everything Royal Caribbean. And then over to the side here, you have the Solera shop and the Port Merchants. Port Merchants is the one where you're gonna get duty-free alcohol and things along those lines. Keep in mind that if you purchase it, you can take it home. It's really inexpensive comparatively, but you cannot consume it on board. They're gonna give it back to you the last night on board the cruise ship. Little more retail here. You got the Solera uh, makeup and, uh, and perfume and things along those lines. But now we're gonna head into a brand new venue that I'm pretty excited about because I've been known to sing a song or two of karaoke on, uh, on Royal Caribbean, but they have this brand new venue is the Spotlight Karaoke. So this used to be the on air, um, but they've converted it and they've added a few really cool things to it. So right when you walk in here, um, you, you notice right away that there is a stage, you've got the microphone up there, so it's perfect for karaoke. You also have a ton of huge screens in here, so everybody can sing along and see what, uh, what songs are being sung. And then right over here is where you're gonna pick your karaoke songs. It's got a huge screen, they have a massive, massive collection of them, uh, and it's, it's evolved so much. I remember uh, when I first started doing karaoke on Royal Caribbean 10, 15 years ago, trying to find the song that you wanted was tough. So one other really cool thing is, are these private rooms. So you see you've got the gold room here and the platinum, I'm just gonna head on in. So this is exactly what you think it is. It is a private karaoke room. So you and a couple of your friends can sit back, relax and enjoy, and you don't have to embarrass yourself in front of everybody else. But if your friends are like my friends, you can be plenty embarrassed in a room like this. And uh, well, we're all gonna have a good time anyways. But once again, there's the other room and we're gonna head back into the space. There's a great bar in here um, and uh, it's, it's just an awesome karaoke bar. Every now and then I get a little bit lonely and you're never coming round. Every now and then I get a little bit tired of listening to the sound of my tears. And I need you more tonight. And I need you more than I And if you only hold me tight, we'll be holding on forever. All right, I'm good. That was amazing. <laughs> All right, so basically what you wanna do is sing a song that you can sing mediocrely terrible. That is the secret to karaoke. So put that down, I am sorry and you're welcome. So one of the really cool things about Spotlight Karaoke too, as you can see throughout all of Royal Caribbean, they're trying to bring people together and uh, have a little bit of interaction. So you can see who's singing out here. You can also hear it. So like I said, I'm sorry and you're welcome. Karaoke is a blast. It's one of my favorite things to do on a cruise ship and uh, why not? It's that place where most people are never gonna see you again, so you might as well go with it. Next on the promenade, we have a Starbucks. So I jokingly call it the American Embassy because they're all over the world, but this was the very first Starbucks ever built on a cruise ship. Um, it's, it's a really great option. I have a lot of clients and friends that love to go to Starbucks every single day, so being able to start your morning on board with the Starbucks is an awesome opportunity. So the next venue I'm heading into is Bolero. So Bolero is the Latin theme nightclub on board, and I guarantee you later tonight, this dance floor will be the one that's rocking the most out of the entire ship. They have a live band in here. They put on great music. It's a fun venue to hang out in, but as you know, those who, uh, who dance with a little bit of Latin flair have more fun in life than those who don't. The venue looks beautiful right now. They redid all the furniture, reupholstered it. It looks gorgeous. You got this big, huge, beautiful bar. And once again, when I'm talking about uh, people watching, this is one of those great venues for it. As we head on, I just wanted to point out one more thing here. Um, I noticed this recently on the Navigator of the Seas as well, but they've got this classic car. Kind of looks like uh, Cuba to me. I was just with, in Cuba recently on a cruise. I'm very sad that we can't do it currently, but uh, it's, uh, it's a really, really awesome thing. And the decor is spectacular throughout the entire ship. All right, so now we're gonna head into the Vitality Sea Spa and Fitness Complex. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say this is a complex. It's absolutely massive. And they've added a few things in here that I love that aren't on most cruise ships. So right when you walk in, 
you kind of have the spa cafe right here. You've got the great decor, you've got the bamboo, very spa-esque, of course. And then as you head over and across, you can get uh, a, an assortment of fresh juices that are really, really good. Once again, this is for an extra charge, or you can get some of the complimentary snacks which don't charge extra. They also have a coffee maker here so you can get all of that. Maybe you're sitting here waiting, hanging out for uh, one of your family members to finish a spa treatment, uh, but it's really kind of a little dining area and spa juicery. Right across the way, you're gonna have the Vitality at Sea Salon. So this is a full service salon where you can get everything done that you can at home. Uh, you get your hair dyed, cut, styled, um, any of those kind of things. So that's over here. And then in addition to that, over here, you also have uh, the full area for manicures, and then they have the full area for pedicures as well with the nice massage chairs over there. All right, so as we continue to head on in, they've got a lot of retail in here where you can buy all the best beauty products in the world. And then right here, you're gonna have the desk where you check in, purchase your spa treatments. Um, and uh, they've got a wide assortment. My personal favorite is the hot stone massage. Um, and uh, if I can get it for three or four hours, even better, you know what I mean? So right here, they're gonna have classes throughout the day uh, about beauty and health um, and all kinds of things. If you're interested, they're gonna have the seminars. They'll have that listed the first day on your cruise and tell you all about it. And as we head down this ramp, we're actually gonna be heading into a place that I don't often see that much of on a cruise ship, except for the first day, I always tour it for sure, but this is the fitness center. I'd like to say that I came here more often than I do, but I don't. So they've got these great uh, evaluation centers over there where they can talk about your health and, and kind of make suggestions for you. Also do personal training and fitness advisements. Um, and then over against the wall there where you've got the windows, you've got all the treadmills, you got bikes, you got elliptical, um, several different kinds of bikes if it's, if it's something that you're interested in. And then as we turn the corner here, you get into the main part of the fitness center where from what I know, you have pretty much every single machine that you could ever desire or want because it's a really big gym. In fact, it's bigger than some, uh, some gyms at home. All right, so as we turn around here, we're gonna get into more of the aerobic fitness area. So you see they have all the weights here that they use with the different aerobics. You've got some spin bikes here, um, balance balls, which I love, the kettles. Uh, you got your yoga mats there, uh, medicine balls. And uh, well, these are fun to play with whether you're using them for exercise or not. And then as we head in, you'll see the spin room that they totally redid recently. They added these screens. All of these are interactive. So when you're doing the exercise, basically you get to compete with everybody else. And we all know that if we're competing, we're probably gonna push ourselves a little bit harder. So next time I'm in the spin room, well, anyway, let's go, keep going. All right, so one interesting and incredibly unique feature, I know I've said that a lot, but the, the uh, Oasis really did create and recreate what we do on a cruise ship. But down below the fitness center where you access it from the fitness center itself is the jogging track. And not only that, but it is a dedicated jogging and walking track, which I really, really appreciate. Um, so right here, talking about the starting line, but as we walk around the edge, they've added all of these uh, different images of people running, which is great. They've resurfaced the track as well, but it's so rare to have a space like this on a cruise ship that is a dedicated track that's not used as a promenade, that's not used as a, a pool deck or something else along those lines. Um, but you can see here, they've got uh, the motivational uh, things up there, one lap to go, or maybe three, tonight's dessert, uh, that kind of fun stuff. This also is an ingenious way to not have the lifeboats block the, the stateroom spaces. This is something you have in a lot of different cruise lines. You have a category where you have like some kind of obstructed view. So behind me, you can see the massive lifeboats. Each one of them holds, it says 370 people. That's incredible, it's crazy. That's a ton of, ton of people. Um, one thing that I did wanna point out is because it's such a huge ship and because of the way they have it set up, um, one mile is only 2.4 laps. That is the least amount of laps you have to do on any cruise ship to get a mile. And uh, maybe I'll walk that a little bit later today. We'll see, I'll get back to you on that. Okay, so in addition to all of the awesome treatments that they have, they also have a Medi Spa that has an acupuncturist on board. I love that. On a Royal Caribbean cruise not that long ago, I actually injured myself when we were in Europe, had acupuncture a couple times and it really made a big difference. So to my right, as we head down to the spa, you have the Smile Spa. So this is where you're gonna get your teeth whitened if you've had a little bit too much coffee, like I may have uh, over the years. But uh, here you've got this great decor. It's very zen-like. You have the, the very quiet music going on and it's really a beautiful spa. And I like having this area kind of leading in where you have a transition from the rest of the ship into the spa itself because it really gets you in that mood. They also have these great aromatherapy infusers all throughout the spa as well, so you get that uh, the hint of the aroma. So just to the right, you have the Y spa. It's actually not really the Y spa anymore. The Y spa was mainly um, a teenage spa, basically. So they still do the, the treatments, uh, but there just hasn't been the demand for it as with the Medi Spa. So let me show you a little bit of what they've done with the Medi Spa here. Okay, so as we head on in, 
you can see that this is all about cool sculpting. So for me personally, the strategy is just to eat absolutely as much as you can on Royal Caribbean, which is not hard to do. And you come here and just have them sculpt it right off. Works perfectly every single time, except for the last time, but that, yeah, that's good. Okay, so now I'm heading down into the main part of the spa area. You see they have this beautiful glass staircase and some lovely bamboo there. I thought it was real, brought in a panda, didn't like it, so it can't be really bamboo from what I can tell. One other thing I just wanted to point out is that because you have that staircase, there also is an accessible uh, elevator right here. So now as we head into the spa, we've got the ladies here that do an amazing job. They'll set you up and, and kind of get you started on the spa treatment and everything along those lines. Once again, some beautiful decor. And uh, before you do your spa treatment, you're always going to head into the relaxation room. So this is a place to basically just chill. Um, they've got some apples and water and, and uh, tea and things along those lines. But the whole purpose for this is just to relax before or after your spa treatment, get everything off your mind that was on it before, kids, work, whatever it is. And that way you can really enjoy your spa treatment and it's vacation after all. So another space on board is the thermal suite. So as we head into the thermal suite, it's kind of a mix of a couple different, uh, different things. So first you've got this tropical rain shower right here. Me personally, I'm too tall to use a lot of the, the showers that have a bathtub in it in the room. So my grand suite, I, I don't fit in there. So I come down and use that all the time. Um, but also you have the, uh, the steam chambers here, which I love. The dry heat, which is going to be similar to a sauna. And then the very last one that you're going to have is the, uh, the aromatherapy room as well. So in addition to that, you also have these hot uh, stone massagers. So they're warm and as you sit on them, which I absolutely love to do, it's really nice because it relaxes your back. Um. Hmm. Oh, shoot. All right, let's finish the tour. Here we go. Let's go. Uh. All right, so as we head out of the thermal suite, essentially, all of the rest of the spa is treatment rooms of different kinds. They have a massive amount of treatments that are available. Check it out as soon as you get on board. Um, that's one little tip that you want to keep in mind is as soon as you get on board, it's great to book those spa treatments, especially if you want them as a, at a specific time because on, on sea days, those are going to go quick. But one little secret too is that on port days, you usually get a discount. So maybe something that you want to ask about as well. All right, so now we're in the Royal Theater. It is a massive venue where they put on full Broadway style production shows here. In fact, tonight they're gonna have Cats. Uh, that's, that's the Broadway show on board the Oasis of the Seas currently. And their brand new show as well. They have a second show. It's, it's very different. It's kind of very modern, new age. You're gonna have newer music in there. But what I loved was the live band on both sides, I think really made it and took that, uh, the music and, and everything else to the next level. So instead of having it pre-recorded or having them down below, you had it right up on, on the sides there and it was really, really amazing. So Royal Caribbean, once again with entertainment you're never going to be disappointed they do an incredible job and this space is also used for a couple other things different events comedy and things along those lines but it's really built and designed for the uh, broadway style shows all right so just outside the royal theater you're going to have the deck for entertainment complex so there's been some tweaks to this but for the most part it's still pretty much the same and it's still a great place to hang out before or after a show so the first venue that we're going to head into is jazz on four so head in here, it's exactly what you think it is. It's a jazz venue, but it's really, really cozy and comfy, and it's, it's a, a great place to go in the evening on board here. You see that uh, they've got beautiful, beautiful furniture, uh, very plush, very relaxed, and then of course the live band up there playing jazz is a great way to spend your evening on board the Oasis of the Seas. Right around the corner is one of my favorite venues on board, and that is the Diamond Club. Each night, uh, actually you can access this whenever you'd like, but basically each night they're gonna have complimentary drinks in here for you. Um, but one of the things they expanded a few years ago when the Diamond members got way, way, way more than, than could fit in a space like this is you can also use those complimentary drinks throughout the entire ship at the different bars uh, and utilize it. So for me personally, I love it because you get a couple free complimentary cocktails every single day. I usually come here in the morning too uh, because you've got an assortment of teas and you've got the coffee maker here as well. I love the espresso. And once again, this is complimentary for Diamond members. So those of you who've been on the Oasis before would recognize that this used to be the Comedy Club, but now it is the Diamond Club. They've eliminated the Diamond Club on the top level and moved it down to here. I'll be honest, it's not my favorite thing that they did in the renovation because personally I love having light and I also love having the two-story Diamond Club there. Now we're heading into Blaze. So what they did is they combined Blaze and the Comedy Club together, which actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, and it's kind of a dual purpose venue. So right when you walk in here, you see that it's set up specifically for the comedy right now. So the Royal Comedians will be up there later on this evening. You've got the full bar. It's a huge bar and it actually, the space goes all the way back. It's a really, really large space. Up there, you're gonna have the DJ booth. And then one final thing that I wanted to point out here is, uh, you know, I've been a fan of the, uh, the Royal Caribbean 
dance club discos for a really long time and I've spent quite a bit of time in them. And this here is kind of a throwback to that, but it's that old school disco nightclub dance floor. You've got the screens up there um, and it's just a, a fun place to hang out and probably a place to end your night. Maybe you do some comedy, do a little dancing, have a drink uh, and then uh, head to bed. All right, so now we're heading into Studio B. It was a absolutely revolutionary concept when it came out with the Voyager of the Seas, putting an ice skating rink on a cruise ship. And to be honest with you, I didn't really believe that it would be as cool as it was until I went on, you experienced the ice shows. They had size 15 ice skates, which I really appreciate because I'm a, a pretty big guy, but such an interesting concept and you're gonna love it too. This is used for several different purposes. So you can see now that they're rehearsing for the ice show. They have a full production ice show that is incredible. I got to see it already and we watched a dress rehearsal earlier. It's fantastic. But they also cover the floor up and they use it for other events. So you can use it for the quest. It's the adults only scavenger hunt that I highly recommend you check out. Can get a little risque, but it's absolutely awesome. And then they also use it for different things like sock hops and parties. Uh, but basically what you have is you have a, a, an arena with stadium seating. So really, really fantastic venue. And with each and every cruise ship, it's gotten a little bit bigger. Okay, just to elaborate one more thing, this is the venue for the brand new laser tag uh, game that they have on board Royal Caribbean. It's the Clash for Crystal City. It's a blast to play with your friends. Personally, I, uh, I grew up in the, uh, you know, the era of, uh, of laser tag when it was really, really cool and awesome in the 1990s. And so I used to go with all my friends all the time when we were teenagers and we would really, really enjoy that. But basically, multi-use space, ton of things that are going on here. So make sure you check out Studio B when you're on the cruise. All right, so now we're headed into the Casino Royale. Just to show you how big this ship is, um, on all the, the older ships, basically the ice skating rink was the entire width of the ship. But because this ship is ultra wide, that's really what makes it super big. It is tall, there's cruise ships that are this tall, but nothing is nearly as wide as this. So you can see that we're actually walking outside and around Studio B um, and to get through. I love that because this ship flows a lot better than the ones with uh, the ice skating rink that kind of cuts it off. Before, so one thing I did want to point out, they have these all around. They're really, really cool. It's just kind of uh, sports statistics, fun facts, uh, different things along those lines that just uh, improve the experience as you walk around. Now we're heading into the Park West Art Gallery. I have a lot of clients that love to buy art on board cruise ships and come on Royal Caribbean consistently, specifically to visit Park West and to either do the auction or purchase something that they've already decided that they were gonna purchase before they went along. Uh, but uh, if you go to one of the art auctions, it can be fun and usually you're gonna get some free champagne out of it, even if you don't purchase anything. The other reason why I chose to go to the right side of Studio B heading aft is this is the smoke-free part of the casino. So in most casinos, it's pretty normal to have smoking allowed in, just like this one. But on this half of the casino, it's smoke-free. And really where you get the completely smoke-free is over here. The other side, there is smoking allowed. So if that's something that you're sensitive to, please keep that in mind. But as we continue on through the casino, you're gonna see they have a ton of the uh, ton of slot machines and things along those lines, all the new digital ones that everybody loves. You have all the casino games that, uh, that you know, you've got roulette, you've got craps, blackjack, three card poker, um, and uh, one of my all time favorite, which is Ultimate Hold'em. And uh, actually I'm gonna head just over here, sorry about that. But I'm gonna head right over to the main bar, which is the very central part of the Oasis uh, Casino. So you can see here, they've got a lot of great new furniture. They just upholstered it all. Uh, it looks great, and this is a great place to hang out if you love the casino atmosphere. I thought since we were in here, I would point out my one and only slot machine that I play, and it's Wheel of Fortune. And I only do it on cruise ships because for whatever reason, I've had a lot of luck. I know most people don't, but uh, anyway, let's give her a spin. Thanks, Vanna. See you later. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to head into the main dining room. The main dining room for Royal Caribbean has been a mainstay for a very, very long time. And this ship actually tells a very interesting story about it. So when we go in, you'll see how beautiful it is. It's three stories high. It's really glamorous, but in 2014, they decided they were gonna chop this up into smaller restaurants and try to reinvent the whole concept into something they call dynamic dining. And uh, Royal Caribbean fans just basically <laughs> said no. Um, they, they canceled their bookings. A lot of people had things to say about it. And so they went back to this main dining room concept. But for me, I'm an old school cruiser. I've been cruising, well, I've been on over hundred cruises myself. And I love the concept of a traditional dining room area where you can go in, have a shared experience with a ton of people and have that same waiter over and over again. So as we came in, we just went past the bar there. That's new to this class of ship where they have a bar to hang out and relax before you come in. But now we're heading into the main part of the dining room. 
So the very first thing that I miss from the Voyager class and the Freedom class is on those ships right there, they had an elegant, beautiful stairway. But I understand, you know, with space and there's so many other cool things on here, you can't have everything. But you'll see you have a beautiful, massive chandelier and you can see it's three stories high. So people are dining on all three levels. There's rot, not really a big difference between them. Um, they're all gonna serve the exact same menu and that menu is gonna change every single day. Okay, so another fantastic dining option on board Royal Caribbean is Azumi Hibachi and Sushi. So once again, this is one of the specialty restaurants that you're gonna pay for. It would be included in the package if you go that way. Oh, hey, I haven't seen you in a while, not since Harmony. Good to see you, buddy. Keep up the good work. All right, so over here, you're gonna see these three hibachi tables. For me and my family, my daughter's almost four. She loves dining like this and she can crush fried rice like nobody's business, but this is just a really fun place to get together with some friends and family uh, and really enjoy this experience. But what I love about that is I really, really love sushi. My wife does not as much. She loves the hibachi, but you can order from both menus. You can also order off the sushi menu as well up here. So you can see this side is more of the, uh, the Japanese style traditional restaurant with an incredible sushi bar. And I've had some of the sushi on board here. They do an amazing job. Keep up the incredible work. Uh, but you can see here, you can seat at the, uh, the bar here if that's something you're interested in. Then they also have a mix of different tables and other options as well. Down on the bottom of deck three, you're gonna find the conference center and business services. I've used this for all kinds of different things. So maybe you wanna set up a meeting or an incentive group for your company or for your, you know, even a family, uh, but they have four really large conference rooms here that can open up and expand and basically accommodate any kind of event that you would wanna do on the ocean. So make sure you reach out to Hard Travel. We've got a department dedicated directly to that and we can make sure that we handle all the details for you so you can just enjoy it and we handle the conference. Please make sure that you like the video, subscribe to our channel and hit the notifications. It makes a huge difference to us. It allows us to make more videos like this. We love cruising. We love sharing cruising with the world. So we'd love to share it with you.